Astronomers have found compelling evidence that challenges the very existence of dark matter, suggesting that our current understanding of the universe might need a major revision. By carefully analyzing the rotation curves of galaxies, how stars move at different distances from the galactic center, they found that the mysterious dark matter may not be necessary to explain these movements after all. This finding adds a new twist to the growing evidence against dark matter, which has long been believed to make up 27% of the observable universe. It has almost been 90 years since the term dark matter was introduced in cosmology, but despite pouring billions of dollars into research, conducting extensive dark matter surveys, and developing complex theories to explain it, we still don't know what exactly makes up this so-called dark matter. Now, some physicists are beginning to question whether it even exists, or whether the problem lies in a deeper misunderstanding of gravity itself. So, what evidence did astronomers find against dark matter? How does it highlight a flaw in our theory of gravity and our current model of the universe? Finally, and most importantly, if dark matter doesn't exist, what explains the decades of related observations made in the cosmos? An interesting thing about this study is that it goes back to the very origins of the dark matter theory, challenging the first piece of evidence ever found in its favor, the rotation curves. In 1933, Swiss astronomer Fritz Zwicky noticed something strange in the coma cluster. A massive collection of around 1,000 galaxies about 320 million light years away. Zwicky noticed that the galaxies on the outer edge of the cluster were moving much faster than they should have been. When he combined the speed of the cluster's rotation with an estimate of the visible matter within it, he found that the cluster was spinning so quickly that it should have flown apart, but it didn't. Zwicky realized that something else had to be there, something that wasn't visible but had mass and was exerting a gravitational pull strong enough to hold the galaxies together. He called this mysterious substance dark matter because it doesn't emit, absorb, or reflect light, making it invisible to our telescopes. Although many ideas in astrophysics and cosmology were Zwicky's brainchild, he was also a controversial figure known to have come up with outlandish assertions. Also back then, cosmology was in its cradle. It was common in physics circles to comment that there's speculation, then there's more speculation, then there's cosmology. So even though some of Zwicky's ideas were usually noted, they weren't always taken further. The same happens with dark matter. It was not a year or two, but a good 40 years after Zwicky first put his hypothesis that the concept of dark matter was taken further. It was in the 1970s when this idea was supported by American astronomer Vera Rubin's analysis of galaxy rotation curves. A galaxy rotation curve is a graph that shows the orbital speeds of visible stars or gas in a galaxy compared to their distance from the center. In our solar system, planets move more slowly as they get farther from the Sun. For example, Mercury completes an orbit around the Sun in 88 days, while Neptune takes about 165 years to complete one revolution. Hence, the rotation curve of our solar system looks something like this. Astronomers expected a similar trend for stars and galaxies. However, Rubin and her colleague Kent Ford found that they didn't follow this pattern. When the two astronomers study the rotation curves of spiral galaxies, starting with the neighboring Andromeda galaxy, they discovered that stars in them moved at surprisingly fast speeds, even as their distance from the center increased. According to our laws of gravity, the farther a star is from the center of a galaxy, the slower it should move. However, observations showed that stars far from the center were moving just as fast as those closer in. The visible matter present in those galaxies could not account for the rotational speed of the stars. This meant that there was something more in these galaxies than what meets the eye. In the next couple of decades, the evidence in favor of dark matter simply kept growing. In the 1980s, the observation of gravitational lensing by galaxy clusters, where light from distant objects is bent by the gravity of a massive object like a galaxy cluster, provided further evidence for dark matter. 
Then, in the 1990s, measurements of the cosmic microwave background, the afterglow of the Big Bang, and the large-scale structure of the universe showed that the universe is much more clumpy and filamentous than it would be if it were made up of only visible matter. Even simulations showed that dark matter is a critical component. Without it, the large-scale structures we see today wouldn't exist. In this way, dark matter became a deep-rooted concept in our most successful cosmological model, named the Lambda Cold Dark Matter Model. Even though the evidence in favor of dark matter was mounting, there was one big problem. We still needed to figure out what exactly makes up dark matter. We knew something was there that was having a gravitational impact on its surroundings, but we had no idea what it was. Interestingly, our theories of gravity were not the first thing we scrutinized. At first, neutrinos were thought to be potential dark matter candidates. They are electrically neutral and weakly interacting, similar to the expected properties of dark matter. Also, experiments in the 1990s suggested neutrinos have small but non-zero masses, implying they could contribute to the universe's total matter density. However, they were soon found to be unsuitable because of their low mass and high velocities. Neutrinos travel close to the speed of light. They exhibit properties of hot dark matter, which is less capable of creating the dense, galaxy-sized formations that cold dark matter can. As a result, the idea of neutrinos being the primary component of dark matter was ruled out. Next, astronomers considered massive compact halo objects, or machos, as potential dark matter candidates. Machos include brown dwarfs, neutron stars, and black holes, objects that are difficult to detect because they emit little or no light. Initially, it was thought that these objects could account for the unseen mass attributed to dark matter. However, further analysis revealed that machos couldn't make up the total mass needed to explain dark matter's gravitational effects in galaxies. It turned out that the amount of dark matter contributed by machos was insufficient, leading to their dismissal as a primary component of dark matter. Then came primordial black holes. Black holes formed from overdensities in the early universe. Such black holes with sufficient mass would not have evaporated by the present day due to Hawking radiation, making them stable dark matter candidates. But the problem is that no primordial black hole has ever been discovered, ultimately ruling them out as the main dark matter component. A similar fate was met with WIMPs and sterile neutrinos. There's simply no experimental evidence in their favor. After years of failing to detect any dark matter particles, even in the world's largest particle colliders, some physicists began questioning whether dark matter exists at all. This led them to explore alternative theories of gravity, one of which is called Modified Newtonian Dynamics, or MOND. Instead of assuming the presence of extra unseen mass, MOND proposes that the laws of gravity themselves change at very low accelerations, such as those found far from the centers of galaxies. In classical mechanics, Newton's second law tells us that the force on an object is given by the equation F equals ma, where F is the force, m is the object's mass, and a is the acceleration. MOND modifies this equation when the acceleration is extremely low, it introduces a small acceleration constant a naught, below which the traditional Newtonian mechanics no longer apply. This acceleration is incredibly small, and according to Mond, the relationship between force F and acceleration A changes through a mathematical function that smoothly transitions from the Newtonian regime to the Mond regime. When accelerations are much greater than a naught, Mond's equation behaves just like Newton's law, which we're familiar with. But when accelerations are much less than a naught, the equation is modified, making the relationship between force and acceleration nonlinear. In a galaxy, the gravitational pull felt by a star depends on the total mass inside its orbit. According to Newtonian dynamics, if you plot the speed of stars against their distance from the galaxy's center, the rotation curve should drop off at large distances because the gravitational force weakens as you move farther from the center. However, these rotation curves remain unexpectedly flat in many galaxies, 
even at large distances. Mond explains this flatness without needing to invoke dark matter. In the outer regions of galaxies, where acceleration is very low, Mond's modified equation applies, meaning that gravity doesn't decrease as quickly as Newtonian physics would predict. As a result, the stars maintain higher speeds than expected, perfectly matching the observed flat rotation curves. One key aspect of galaxy dynamics that can help distinguish between MOND and the standard cosmological model, the LCDM model, is the behavior of extended galaxy rotation curves at great distances from the galactic center. The idea is to observe how these rotation curves behave far out in the galaxy's outskirts. In the LCDM model, dark matter halos prevent the rotation curves from declining, as expected by Newtonian physics alone. These halos have a finite radius ranging from a few kiloparsecs to around 200 kiloparsecs. But what happens beyond this range? As the influence of gravity decreases, the rotation curve should eventually start to decline beyond the radius of the dark matter halo. But Mond predicts the opposite. Far from the galactic center, these are regions where stars and gas have extremely low acceleration. As a result, the modified equation governs their motion. Hence, galaxy rotation curves should remain flat even as the radius increases beyond the expected extent of the dark matter halo. To determine whether MOND or the LCDM model better explains galaxy dynamics, astronomers have analyzed rotation curves at large radii, extending into the range of megaparsecs. They studied isolated galaxies using data from the Kilo Degree Survey Data Release 4, which offers detailed measurements and analyses of the large-scale structure of the universe through gravitational lensing effects. The researchers split galaxies into four groups based on their mass and compared two types of galaxies, early type or older galaxies and late type or younger galaxies within similar mass ranges. To predict how these galaxies should behave, they used the Navarro-Frank-White density profile for the LCDM model. According to this model, the speed of stars should slow down at the outer edges of the galaxies because dark matter halos become less dense farther out. However, when the researchers analyzed the data, they saw that this wasn't happening. Instead of slowing down, the stars kept moving at the same speed, even at the outer edges. This pattern was seen across all mass groups for both early and late type galaxies. This unexpected result suggests that the current ideas about dark matter may be incorrect or incomplete. On the other hand, these results align perfectly with the predictions of MOND, where galaxy rotation curves are expected to remain flat in the low acceleration regime. This consistency with observations is a significant win for MOND and poses a challenge to the LCDM paradigm. Even though several studies support MOND, one of the most notable successes is its prediction of massive young galaxies. Starting in 2022, the James Webb Space Telescope has observed gigantic early galaxies which seem to contradict the standard cosmological model that includes dark matter. According to the LCDM model, galaxy formation involving dark matter should be a slow process, which would prevent fully grown massive galaxies from existing so early in the universe. However, the rapid appearance of these massive galaxies aligns more closely with Mond's predictions, suggesting galaxies could form much earlier in the universe's history. Despite its strengths, Mond is not a complete theory of cosmology and faces significant challenges. It lacks a relativistic framework, struggles to explain the observed mass discrepancies in galaxy clusters, and has inconsistencies between certain predictions and observations. These limitations have prevented MOND from being widely accepted as the standard model of cosmology so far. Currently, MOND and LCDM are engaged in a tug-of-war, with both models offering explanations for some of the universe's most puzzling phenomena, but each falling short in different ways. Imagine trying to understand the movement of stars in a galaxy billions of light years away. MOND and LCDM both offer theories, but how do you really wrap your head around such complex movements? With Brilliant, you don't have to just imagine. 
Brilliant is a revolutionary platform that transforms how we learn complex topics. Instead of passively consuming information, Brilliant lets you actively engage with each lesson through hands-on problem solving, proven to be six times more efficient than traditional videos. The lessons are crafted by experts from MIT, Duke, Caltech, and top tech companies such as Microsoft and Google. Through Brilliant, you can build critical thinking skills that go beyond memorizing facts. The best part is that it fits seamlessly into your daily routine. In just a few minutes a day, you can transform moments of idle scrolling into powerful opportunities for growth. I've personally found their scientific thinking course especially engaging. It's like you're solving real-world challenges in physics, from collisions to planning intergalactic journeys. This course is perfect for everyone, whether you're just starting out or looking to deepen your knowledge. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash the secrets of the universe or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video, and thanks to you for watching.